Good afternoon. Um, welcome to episode 915, 915. 915, just to give you all the variations. Yeah, it's just the three. Um, today's topic is about independence versus codependency and why neither one is a good one. I talked about it before about codependency, but I thought, you know what, then let's talk about independence today. So today's topic is, are you too independent for a relationship? And why the op this opposite of codependency doesn't work. So I'll explain that more in a moment. Um, before I do that, I'll introduce myself and explain why I do these talks every day, so you may want to tag along. Um, my name is Barry Selby, in case you didn't know that already. I am an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, love and relationships expert, and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, book for singles and couples, men and women. I highly recommend the book, by the way. Um, I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what informs my work, but also what Hi, Susie. Yes, it's going to be a good one. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> um, this is a Facebook Live, by the way, in case you're wondering, if you're watching, wondering who I'm talking to. Um, this actually started three years, this, this series of talks started three years ago called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today we're episode number 915. So three years worth. There's a lot of talks. And I'll tell you at the back end where you can find the replays. And again, this is Facebook Live. So if you're on here live with me, you can interact. If you're watching the replay, you can comment and I'll respond after I sign off. Just so we're clear. So, the topic today is about independence, and especially for the ladies, this one's going to be, I think, because, well, let me, let me frame it this way. I was talking, I was talking earlier today, okay, different, different Facebook Live, not, not the public one. So this is a public version of what I was talking about earlier, but in deeper, greater detail. Let me take you back to the 1970s. <laughs> Journey with me back in 40 years, like, as time go, was it? Was that the wheel? No, it was the world turns. I oh, know, sorry, it was a soap opera thing came to mind. Anyway, <laughs> let me cut to the chase. Back in the 60s, before the 70s, there was a big shift in our culture called the sexual revolution, also called women's liberation movement, also called the feminist movement by various cultures, depending where you were. I grew up in England, so in England it's called women's lib. That was the shorthand version of it. And basically what happened during that time, at least that's the way it's presented, was women got their freedom. In fact, women got their independence because up until that time, for most women, they didn't actually live on their own, have their own income. They basically stayed at home till a man came along and courted her and then took her into his home and married her. Or married her, then took her into his home, to get a sequence. A very puritanical method, by the way. Um, and a somewhat patriarchal structure, too. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that this time, I think. Back to, the, back to the topic at hand. So moving to the 70s. By this point, women had really started finding their own footing in the world. And for many women, they had taken their independence seriously, like taking it to heart and really taking it on. So they didn't need a man. They're like so clear now they didn't need, didn't, they were now having this equal rights type thing, although it wasn't really equal. But they were finding their way in the world where they took care of their own business, they worked in their own jobs, they paid their own income, had their own apartments, houses, whatever homes, um, had their own car, had their own bank accounts. Basically, they didn't need a man because everything else, up to that point, all those things I mentioned, a man provided for her. I remember as a kid, in the late 60s, yes, I'm that old, um, the bank account was in my dad's name. My mother didn't have a bank account. So I remember that time somewhat vividly. It was in my pre-teens, just so I'm not that old. Not that old. <laughs> it was happened a long time ago. So in the 70s was a big shift in our culture, both back in England back, and as well as over here. And for many women, it was a rite of passage in a way to start standing on your own two feet. Now, this hasn't changed much in the last, since then, so 50, plus, 50 years or so where women have still been finding their own way and living in the world on their own terms. And for many women, well, there was a, let me split that, there's two different forms. For a lot of women, finding their independence was a, free, was a call to freedom. It was like a, a um, opening of their heart to be able to take care of themselves and not need a man. It was an wake up call for so many women who for many, many years before that, couldn't live without a man. That's the codependency stuff I talked about before. So as we move forward into, the, into this time, like modern time, so to speak, women are still doing the same thing. Now, I said there was a split because a lot of women decided there was too much work and just to be brutally frank, a lot of women decided to hang out for men who made their money and they just become a trophy wife. I know many, many women in California did that. Southern California, especially Orange County, was famous for that in the 80s and 90s for trophy wives, which is basically women who wanted to look good for the man to take care of everything they needed. That's not independence either. <laughs> That's true codependence. So, let me talk, to the, I'm talking about the women who did in fact find their own way, take care of themselves and take their lives into their own hands and shed the need for a man in their life. 
if a lot of women who were in that path, they never actually found love because they had this belief prop of some sort running that's on the lines of um, being married, having kids, being tied down was a limiting thing and would lose their independence. So they'd rather stay their independence than choose into those things that would drag them down into codependency. The problem with this black and white either or experience is that not, that's not the only choice. And I'll get to that in a moment. So I'm just, plant, just planting seeds now, the fact that there's the independent streak and there's the codependency model, which is dysfunctional either way you pull it, either way you put it. There's a third option, third option, get the fingers the right way around, um, that I'll get to in a moment. So for a lot of women, the challenge has been to live their life fully in the world. And maybe they're very dynamic in the business world, making a huge success, becoming entrepreneurs, but become CEOs of companies. But their relationship experience sucked. For many women, the dance of relationship became one where they would be unwilling to risk what they'd achieved, what they'd, what they'd managed to do, who they'd become for any man. And I understand that totally. For many women, having worked so hard to own their own space and to take care of themselves and to be that independent meant any man who came into life couldn't touch that, not and be with them. Because the women who knew, women who know this, know that they would see too many men who would try to take it from them or compete with them or try and knock them down. I've talked about that before a couple of years ago time for renewal. So many women, ha many, many women have had challenging relationships with men who didn't appreciate, honor, respect them in their leadership or basically were trying to say either compete with them, um, knock them down or dominate them or take it away from them. Or the other option was they become beta males and I was one of them so I know what it felt like. So well Susie I can help you with that. So hang on a second I'll get to a couple answers too. Yeah, so that's where you are you're stuck. So let me finish my thought and I'll come back to where you were going. Do I find my thought again? Hang on a second. <laughs> it was the, oh yes, the beta male. Sorry, I was just reliving my own memories for a second there. I spent many years being a beta male with women who were more powerful. So I know the pain of being on the other side of that as a man. So just to be clear, that was, that was what put me on this path in the first place because I was no longer willing to play that game. And I, and I found a path um, 12 years ago that changed my life. And so I'll get, I'll, I won't talk about that now because it's not relevant, but I'll talk about this piece you were asking about, Susie, about being stuck. So again, as I mentioned, there's the independent side and then there's the codependent side. The thing is there's something in the middle of that, which is much healthier. And I'll explain that one in a moment. Just wanna make sure I covered all the other pieces. So can ladies do that and do that? Yeah, okay. So the third place to play ladies, actually this is true for men and women, this part, the word I use a lot, and it's, it still comes out clunky, is interdependency. You come and listen a bit. You have a book study group right now. No problem, Susie. You want to replay? I'll be up and running shortly. I'm actually going to be in. I'm actually in part of a um, a training going at the same time as this is. So I got to get as soon as I get off this, I can join that training in progress too. So yeah, I understand. Go do that and come back and check the broadcast afterwards. So the third piece, the third option, the middle. This is the middle rail. The third option basically is what I call interdependence. And what that means, is the way I've interpreted it, is in a meaning where you basically have honoring choices. Hey, Jenny, nice to see you. Thanks for being in my broadcast. Where you have, where ladies especially have your own space, your own autonomy. But you find a man you can trust who you can basically be interdependent with because none of us really are fully 100% able to take care of ourselves on all levels for all the time. Well, we can, but it's not fun. Having a partner that can contribute to that relationship between us is a joy, is a pleasure. But it's doing it from a place of autonomy where both partners are independent and able to intermix with each other is where interdependency comes from. Codependency is a place, just to recap that, where you put responsibility on the other person to make you feel happy in simplistic terms. Interdependency isn't that. Interdependency is I'm fine on my own and I enjoy you being with me. It's kind of a place where it sounds almost unromantic, but actually it's more romantic because it's more detached, more free, more comfortable to be together. When you're in inter interdependency, again, it's independence plus. It's being able to take care of yourself and able to take care of your partner, but your partner doesn't need you to take care of them. They can take care of themselves. So they're getting the gravy, the bonus, the, the gravy, too much Thanksgiving, the bonus of that on top of their own self-care as you get it too. You take care of yourself as well and your partner additionally adds more self-care on top of that, which is wonderful. So those, those, extern those, um, what's the look? Th those um, extremes, are where you lose on either, either side, but you come into interdependency, there's a much healthier place to play. Now, this is a part also where 
well, one of the words that comes up is trust, because interdependency <sighs> requires you to be really tuned in. It's interesting when you start looking at how you want to be in relationships, especially when you own your own independence, where you've been burnt so many times, it's hard to trust somebody, a partner. There are many men out there who don't understand this, unfortunately, which is why a lot of women are getting burned in a relationship. Either men have become dependent upon them or try to control them. It's either way, it's not working either way. So the more men that are waking up to this conversation too, and this is what I had to wake up to, was learning how being with a woman is not about me having to take care of her. It's a joy for me to do so, but it's out of a, an abundance and overflow where I don't need her in my life to make me whole. And this is the key for both men and women. When you can be in a relationship with somebody where you don't need them to make you whole, that's an improvement because most of us are in the trap, the old paradigm where we can't live without you. As um, was said in Jeremy Maguire in one of many movies, is that you know you complete me was the catchphrase of the movie. One of the most, apart from show me the money, um, you complete me was the other most famous quote from the movie. movie. And it's the exemplar, fancy word meaning, the example of <laughs> codependency. So you don't want to be in that boat. You're sitting on a place where I don't care about you. See, not needing you is different from not caring about you. So having a relationship with somebody where it's additive, where you can enjoy each other and have a great time together. And yes, you can have commitment to each other. But you also own your own space, your own, your own integrity, you own your own participation in the relationships. So you're both fully healthy aligned. That is healthy. So to sum this up, because I want to keep this, yeah, I want to keep this short because I've got to be another call in a minute, watching the clock, is the way through this is interdependency. Now, the trick about this is you've got to learn how to trust yourself and trust somebody else, which means you've really got to work, not got to, I really advise you to really work on your own um, in, in integrity and intuition. Those two words coming up at the same time there. To really get you in the place where you guide yourself into the right relationship. Now, again, the signposts of interdependency are not needing the other person to make you feel whole, but loving the other person to be participating. That's the that's the delineation of the two, so to speak. Um, a lot of my clients have gone through this. I, I, I find this so many times when I talk to clients. There is an appearance of them feeling like if a man would only do this, they'd feel happy. That's a trap. If a man would do whatever it is to make you happy, then you are not happy if he doesn't do it. That puts you in a codependent space where basically he has your puppet strings. You don't want to play that game. So codependency doesn't work. Inter independence works to a degree, but not for healthy relationships. Interdependency, the third option, is where really thriving, healthy, expansive, growing, rich, rewarding, wonderful relationships happen. I talk about that in my book, by the way. So we'll put a plug in for my book at the back end as well. So if this makes sense to you, I hope it does. If you have any questions, I invite you to reach out to me either through social media or put them below and I'll respond when I sign off because this is for some people a very interesting, like, say what experience. And if you're not sure how to work with this, I can help you. So I'll put some links in the comments as always to give you some calls to action you can respond to. Um, one I mentioned is the book. I will put my book in the comments because this is one of the chapters in the book. Actually, it's two chapters in the book. So that'll help you if you want to read more about it. Secondly, I'll put a link in the comments for, um, well, <laughs> I didn't mention it earlier, but I mentioned it now. One of the ways you find yourself to not be codependent is when you start to really support yourself. So not necessarily independence, but when you spend the time focusing on how to take care of yourself, which for me starts with, and it's built on, self-love. I've said it so many times, but I want to give you this point about it. We get trapped in codependency because we think the other person is going to love us enough to make us feel whole. When you're not in the place where you need that person to love you, you already are whole. It starts when you fill up your own batteries, so to speak, first. So self-love is the way to do that. And it sounds simplistic, but it's not always easy because we go through, go through all our own barriers about self-image and self-respect to get to a place where we can love ourselves. And I'll put the link in the comments for my self-love guided meditation because if you practice it and you do it every day for 30 days, the AM and the PM audio meditations, and you look at the workbook and you do the levels of depth in there, it will transform your relationship with yourself and give you the chance to be more interdependent and less codependent in all your relationships. So that's going to be the comments because that will change your life. As simple as it is and as economical as it is, it will change your life. It's only, five, it's only five minutes twice a day for 30 days. Worth it? I think so. So my book will be in the comments. My self-love meditation will be in the comments. And a conversation with me is going to be in the comments. I'll put a link in the comments for a chat with me, a consult, a discovery session where you can get clarity on what you want, where you want to go, and how you want to be. Um, those three things will be in the comments for you to check out. I invite you to click on all of them, check them all out, jump into all of them, get some help, get support. Um, and then you'll be right on the road for where you want to go. 
Um, this is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned, uh, episode 915, as I said. If you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do this every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page on Facebook. Um, and one day I'm gonna be early, I know, I've already got something else planned for 5 p.m. that day. Um, so you can watch me on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. You can watch me every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, right there, right here. If you haven't seen my broadcast before and you wanna see the replays, um, those are on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. And you can watch them all there. You can like my page and watch them all there, although they're not all visible all the time because Facebook's weird that way. But I do have them backed up on YouTube. So if you go to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Mask. And you can watch all my broadcasts anywhere you want. They're sorted by um, newest to oldest. You can check on anyone you want and get the help you need. So links, replays, that's everything there. Um, I thank you for watching. I need, I need to get going because I was on another, another call. Um, but I appreciate you being with me as always. If you have any questions, comments, please put them below. If you want to share it with anybody, please do that too. If you have any questions, you want to reach out to me over social media, you can do that. And also check out the links I put in the comments. They're here to help. I'm here to help. And I want you to have the best life possible. So once again, I thank you for watching. I appreciate you being with me. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.